we'll kick off with Emma Saunders from PLP. Hi, Mikael. Uh, yeah. I hope you're well. Good to have everyone back, I'm sure, after the break. So we'll start there with any injury updates, any team news ahead of Monday. And with that, just anything on Granite Xhaka, any interaction you've had with him over the past few days or so? Not uh, any bad news. At the moment, everybody seems to be okay. Um, Granite is progressing really well, but obviously we know that it's um, a long-term injury, unfortunately, and um, he's not going to be available. Arsenal seem to really turn a corner after the last international fortnight. Do you have the feeling that this break has done just as much good as the last one and you can pick up where you left off again? It's what it is. Uh, we managed to turn things around a little bit. Um, there is still big margin <clears throat> for improvements, um, but we got uh, important results that uh, they were very needed in that moment. And we just need to think about doing things better, progressing in the table and, and focusing on winning our next match. Well, going into the break, the defence really started to look quite stable and settled with those three clean sheets in four. But going forward with just the five goals so far in the Premier League, would you say that attacking threat has been the main area of focus as, as you prepare for Crystal Palace? Well, they've been many areas. That's one of them. Obviously, the players that we have available to work uh, here because of the amount of international we have is very limited. But it's something that uh, certainly we can do better. We can improve even our efficiency in front of goal. Um, and when we get that balance right, obviously, it will help us to, to win more games. Patrick Vieira um, will, of course, be making a much-anticipated return to Arsenal Monday with Palace. Before we talk about him as a manager, just speaking as a former Arsenal captain yourself, how much did you admire him as a player? He's an Arsenal legend, and I hope he gets uh, the reception that he deserves for what he did for the football club. Not only as a, as a player as well, um, what he transmitted um, as a person. Um, he was the captain of the football club in the most successful era, um, probably in the last uh, many years. And um, it's great to have him back. And how impressed have you been with how quickly he's adapted as, as a Premier League manager? Well, he has already a couple of experiences and uh, he knows the league really well. And, and you can see the touch that, that um, he's trying to put in, in the team and the thing that he's trying to, to implement there. And do you feel that the way he sets Crystal Palace up, do you feel they're a side that you might be able to create more against on Monday? I don't know how they're going to set up. Uh, they've done it in, in different ways, using... Um, Different players in most of the time, similar formations. Um, let's see how the game develops. OK, we'll leave it there. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. We'll now come to Gary Cotter, who's in the room. Uh, hello, Mikael. Hi. First of all, congratulations on your award. Thank you. Manager of the month. You haven't had a chance to speak to you since it was announced. Do you welcome that kind of personal accolade? Yeah, it's not personal um, because it's all the people that is behind... Uh, that helps um, to achieve those those trophies. It's, um, it's nice. And uh, as manager, we just focus now on the next thing, which is uh, win more football matches and hopefully more to come because that will mean that uh, we're doing the right things. Isn't it funny how things can change in football? One minute you're getting slaughtered and you're under pressure. The next minute you're winning manager of the month. It is the opportunity that uh, this game gives you. And um, that's always. You have to stand up and... And keep believing, work hard, be critical and try to analyse things to try to change them and improve them. And um, football gives you always another opportunity. Spoke there about Patrick Vieira, a legend in the true sense of the word here at Arsenal. I expect you expect him to have a big welcome from the Arsenal supporters, but well, he deserves it, doesn't he? I have no doubt that that will be the case, uh, to have him back and welcome him. And, um, and having his figure and, and why he's been at the club recognised in the right manner, I think it's really important and I'm sure that that, that will be the case. Um, in terms of Granite, he's been on his social media page uh, looking pretty happy, saying he's in work mode, quotes. Do you think it's, it might be less than the three months that people were talking about before he's back? Uh, with Granite, I don't know. But I'm, what I'm sure is that if you tell him three, he will be thinking two. Um, he will be trying to cut edges and, and doing extra work to try to 
to minimize that time, that's for sure. And we have to do it in the in the right way because it's a significant injury and we want to have him back properly when uh, when he can. Sounds like you've had a good international break in terms of you haven't one of the players, as far as you know, picked up any injuries. And indeed, mm. Thomas Partey has been very impressive for Ghana, scored a couple of goals as well. He has had his injury problems, though. It's a Monday kickoff, so will he have time to be involved in the game against Palace? Well, let's see. We haven't had the players here yet, uh, some of them, because um, they're still travelling and... And they are not being assessed by the medical staff, but hopefully, you know, he finishes both games really well. He played well. He scored a couple of goals, um, like many other players did in this uh, international break. And hopefully everybody's in the right condition on Monday to, to help us win the game. Just a quick revisit again, Patrick Vieira. Were you surprised Crystal Palace picked him as head coach manager, given that he hasn't experienced you know, a top job? Well, but he, he had experiences before and uh, obviously Patrick knows the league uh, much better probably than any other manager because he has experienced himself as as a player and um, it's great that he got the opportunity to do that. Another legend, another Arsenal legend, Thierry Henry, has been commenting about your Arsenal. He said he's watched all the games despite your run of good results. Um, he says that um, he's not sure the team's going in the right direction. Have you heard those comments and what do you make of them? No, I haven't. I'm just hearing from you. It doesn't help though, does it, when big name former players make comments like that? I guess it's just, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just another opinion, so you have to respect that. Ten points from four games. Was it actually contrary to the earlier questioning? Was it a bad time for the break to come? Would you rather have carried on with the momentum? When you're in good momentum, you want to carry on playing. Uh, as quick as possible and when the confidence is there and the momentum is there you want to continue but again we knew that we had to stop after that game we want to get as many points as possible and um, we did um, well enough to do that and be in a different position to a month ago and now we have to just improve it thank you thanks gary we'll now go to george cummins thanks dan Mikel. hello um is it a little bit of football romance in a way that 25 years ago, Arsene Wenger was in charge of Arsenal for the first time. And here on Monday, you've got two of his former captains managing the club. I just wonder what you thought of that. I don't know that when you are still in this industry, you know, that ball is rolling and, and roles change, you know. And in the next 10 years, something else would happen with another former player or another manager that has a different role in another team. It's, uh, it's part of what it is. Did you... Uh, what was your thoughts on that Arsenal 2004 Invincible team? Because that's what Vieira's, one of his famous things for Arsenal. I know you never played against the Invincibles, but what was your take on that team? They, they were a joy to watch. Um, I think that team had everything. They dominated every aspect of the game in the right way. He had uh, incredible leadership to start with, um, with some of the names that they had. He had a, a present, they have the right identity, and um, and they have the talent, the quality, and then the, um, the self-confidence as well uh, to believe that they were the best and they show it. As a former centre midfielder yourself, would you have liked to have played against Vieira in no. his peak? <laughs> <laughs> no, because again, he was very dominant. He was physically um, really gifted, technically. He had, uh, he had the right temper, um, he was brave. Um, he could score goals. He could do a bit of everything and he was a, a remarkable player. Um, can I just ask you one about Lacazette? There's a few stories that potentially could leave in January. I just wonder what your response to that would be. No, that's uh, we are focusing on getting the best out of Laka and, and he shows every day his commitment is here. And we just want to give him the right minutes so he can show the quality and he can help the team um, to be better. And Jack Wilshere, he was at the Newport match with, with a young side in, in the week. Is there a plan for him at the moment? Or are you just, is, is, what's, the, what's the future for him and Arsenal? He's around the place. We are trying to help him to get uh, fit. He's training sometimes with us, sometimes with academies around the place. Um, it's been great to have him around and, um, and that will continue to be the case. Thanks. Good luck on Monday. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. George. We'll go to Ian from TalkSport. Hi, Mikael. How are you? Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you can. Oh, okay, cool. Um, just 
just one more on, on Patrick Vieira, because I know he's a legend. I know he's going to get a great reception. I know you've been asked about him ad infinitum. But in a, in a way, Arsenal have been searching for another Vieira in terms of that midfielder and that captain pretty much since he left. Is that fair? I don't know. It has been a long time ago, so I don't know what the, the research has been. Um, there will be another really good uh, midfielders. And Patrick was Patrick. He's not going to have another one like him. But apart from you, when you captain the team, there hasn't been another kind of Tony Adams, Patrick Vieira, you captain, a big name, big personality that really can lead the team to back to its former glories. Yeah, but we can have them in, in different positions, uh, in different qualities. It's a different era as well. And and the world players were raised, educated, um, was different to now as well, Ian. And uh, we cannot try to, to copy that. Obviously, it would be great to have someone like him in the team or Tony. And uh, we have different qualities and different characteristics with players. And uh, we have to develop them. About six weeks ago, when Aaron Ramsdale joined or, or whenever the transfer window ended, um, there were a lot of Arsenal fans on, on social media that, that weren't happy. You held your nerve. You came and spoke to us about Aaron joining. And it's proved to be 100% the right decision because he looks uh, as if he was almost born to be the Arsenal goalkeeper. I don't know. But we, we tried to make it a decision as a club uh, to sign and bring the right profile that uh, we believe um, he had all the qualities needed to succeed at the club. And uh, still very early to <clears throat> to make a judgment of um, how good he is, um, the way he settled, um, what he can transmit on and off the pitch. I think it's uh, really important. He has engaged and he has adapted really well to to the club. I think he's getting a great connection as well with our supporters, and um, and he's performing well, which is the most important thing as well. Do Do you think if he carries on like this, he could challenge Jordan Pickford to be the number one for England? He needs to keep performing like what he's doing and always trying to think, OK, what I'm doing right, continue to do those things and be humble and think about as well uh, the things that he can improve. And everything would come naturally. Like it has already happened to him very early to be a goalkeeper, to be fair with his age and his career. But um, he deserves that because of how he has handled every step along the way. And some of them, they've been difficult moments and disappointments, which are important as well. Um, to evolve in your career. Uh, and finally, a couple on Emil Smith-Rowe. I spoke to him the other night after he scored the winner for England's under-21s against Andorra. And, and he, he very much gave you most of the credit, saying that you're the one who is just trying to get him to score more goals and, and improve his game in, on that front. Is that the main thing he has to do to improve his game? Just, just add goals to them? I think the intention, the hunger and the ambition should be there. Um, and he's capable of doing it. We want to ask players things that they can um, achieve. And I'm sure that Emil can improve that part of his game. He's so willing to do it. He's working on it almost every day. He's asking the right question. And um, and he's getting better because he has a real hunger. And he seems he seems very, the word that everyone uses right now, humble. He doesn't seem very big-headed at all. Is that something you're also instilling into him to keep his feet on the floor? To be fair, I mean, it's naturally like this. If anything, sometimes you have to tell him how good he is and he needs to believe how good he is and encourage him to, to try things because he's capable of doing. And um, he's a joy to work with and um, still very early in his career, but um, we know we are really happy to have him in the team. Cheers, Mikel. Good luck on Monday. Thank you. Nick, hello from Haters. Hi there, Mikel. Um, as you know, these press conferences are a way for you to sort of talk directly to the supporters as much as anything else. So I've been asking, I did a little survey of the fans to see what they'd like to ask you. And the number one topic was what's going on with Gabriel Martinelli. Why is he not getting many game, much game time so far? Well, because of the, um, the amount of players that we have um, in those positions, first of all, he had some games that he played. He started against Brentford. And he started against uh, Chelsea as well. And he started <clears throat> another game. Unfortunately, he got injured last week. It's a minor injury. Um, we don't know if he's going to be available for Monday. But uh, we have a lot of trust with Gabby. And we need to find the right space for him to grow um, within the squad. So he was playing a lot about a year or so ago. But has he gone backwards in terms of his progression? 
No, if you look at the number of games that he's played, obviously the, the injuries that he has suffered has been big setbacks um, on that with him. We sometimes forget his age, what he's done and, and where he is. And uh, we need to try to help him as well to maintain that balance right. Because, you know, you can generate frustration that comes out of, um, in my opinion, um, a not very realistic diagnosis. And, um, and you need time to do that. Would you like him to go on loan in January? Is it would it be on loan that he gets more of a chance? No, I'm very happy with him. We're not thinking about anything like that. Okay. The other question was looking ahead to the new year and the Africa Cup of Nations. Granite could be injured, I know, but if you've got El Neni and Thomas Party going as well, what plans have you made in in midfield? Let's see where we are at that point. Uh, which player we have available and which player has to definitely be there, and for how long? Because there are some question marks there as well, and. Um, we will find a solution. We have no choice. If they have to leave, they have to leave and we'll have to, to find the right replacements for them. In terms of midfield, what's the situation with Matteo Genduzzi, who was in the France squad for the Nations League victory? Is there any chance of him coming back or is he gone for the season? Uh, for example, for right now, he's gone for the season and um, I think he's having a really good spell in Marseille and it's part of the plan that we made with him and, and he continued with his development and we made a decision at the end of the, of the year. But is it fair to say he's played his last game for Arsenal? I think you cannot say that about a player that uh, is on by the club. Okay. okay well, Nick, thanks for your time. Good luck on Monday. Cheers. Thanks, Nick. That ends the broadcast session. Uh, section. Um, we now move on to...